it fast. Right here on the Anycast. Make it strong. Make it last. Right here on the Anycast. So, without further ado, I am here with the man, the one and only New Hampshire tech guru, Tom Daly. How the hell are you? Hey, Matt. How you doing? Very, very good, sir. I'm well. Well, uh, th- first of all, thanks for being here, wherever here virtually is in in the cloud. For those who don't know you, can you give me the the, the backstory and, and who you are, how we got here? Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. So my name's Tom Daly. Uh, I'm sitting in Nashua, New Hampshire. Uh, I've been a long time New Hampshire resident, born and raised here. In the late 90s, I had a friend whose parents were running a, you know, what we would call today a managed service provider, right? A, a PC shop and they were, uh, you know, performing services for local IT services for local businesses. And this guy told me one day about, you know, what it takes to build a dial up ISP. And I got really interested in what he had to t- tell me. And, uh, it was like in high school at the time. And I said, I'm going to go figure out how to get a job at an ISP because I think this is really cool. Like being on the, being online is very cool to begin with. I already had like some like AOL dial up account or something like that. I think I started with AOL Mm. and, uh, I'm like, well, what does it take to build an ISP? And, you know, like as like 14, 15 year old kids started putting together a resume and like put it out to a couple local ISPs and really none of them called me back except for one. Uh, it was this guy, his name is Gent Cab. He's still in the business today. And at the time he ran Metro 2000 internet services and he was like, yeah, come check it out. Right. Like come see our ISP. And I remember being so excited to go see what this ISP was all about because they had, you know, they had a T1 line. Ooh. And I was like, Gent, show me the T1 line. I can't wait to see this thing. Right. And he points to a piece of plywood on the wall and there's a little RJ48X jack. And he's like, well, that's what it is. And it was like the biggest letdown in the world. Like I was expecting some fat cable on the wall. But anyways, uh, got the start in the industry uh, working dial-up technical support for a local internet service provider. Uh, Jen was a fantastic mentor. And uh, I learned a lot about network design, network engineering, you know, various protocols, very, very hands-on uh, learning experience and went off to university and met up with the, uh, the founder of DineDNS.org, a gentleman by the name of Tim Wild, and decided that I wanted to do something a little bit bigger than the ISP and jumped over to DineDNS.org in the same role, you know, tech technical support. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there really just processed a lot of tickets every day for a while until one day I got really frustrated with our web app. And realized that our web app was just running users into like a dead wall every time they click through a certain, you know, sequence and flow in the app and couldn't get developer time to pay attention to it. So I was like, well, this is, this is like Perl and HTML Mason. I had taken a couple programming classes in high school. Like I can figure this out and just started writing some code Mm. and got a little incrementally better and better and better at it. And eventually became, you know, after about five years, became the chief technology officer at Dyn. And that was at a phase where, you know, we were building the business and we were deciding what we were going to do with DynDNS. And we decided to go up market away, you know, keep our consumer business. But we also wanted to have something that was uh, relevant to uh, businesses and enterprises. And that's when we built out the Dynect managed DNS platform. It was our first, first foray into the world of Anycast IPv4 networking. And, you know, took on the role of like chief architect and CTO for the Dynect network. Speeding forward one more time, had a really challenging customer at at Dynect called Archer Bergman. uh, Hard to believe Archer would be challenging. Yeah, right, right. Uh, I mean, Archer is the type of customer that you love and hate at the same time, right? You love him because he challenges you and you hate him because he challenges you at, you know, 5 30 p.m on a friday when you're trying to have like a date out with your girlfriend at the time mm-hmm. um so uh eventually moved over to fastly and uh came in as vp of infrastructure there and was responsible for building out the global network at fastly in my role we built that to about 75 points of presence around the globe um 
you know, 75, I think 76, the scoreboard was connected internet exchange points and about a hundred terabit per second of connected edge capacity at the time. And, you know, that's since ex expanded exponentially from there. Um, the thing, you know, at Fastly that we were all pretty excited about is we figured out a way to do networking uh, that didn't require us to go buy big iron routers and big iron load balancers, which, you know, in the CDN industry is, you know, a huge advantage from a capital expenditures standpoint. So, so that was sort of like the learning grounds. And then uh, a couple of years back, got involved with the folks uh, at Big Network and decided to take really sort of the learnings of 20 years and put it into a new venture. Uh, and Big Network is in the business of building software that helps tier two and tier three ISPs deliver resilient connectivity solutions to their business class customers. So we have a, uh, a suite of networking software that helps deliver very, very resilient internet access um, out to the edge of the internet, which in our opinion has, you know, traditionally been kind of ignored by the, you know, the software and hardware sectors. Do you think it, it, like New Hampshire was a, not a hub of technology uh, things, at least compared to a Silicon Valley or New York or, um, you know, today's Austin and all the sort of startup -y places. Was that... Did that help help or hurt Dine, and it, it would, and for you growing up, did that help or hurt you as like computer geek? I have seen it through both lenses, right? I mean, we had a we had an early consultant at Dine uh, who came in and sat down with our leadership team and saw what we were doing, and he had just gotten off of a large assignment at Yahoo out in Sunnyvale, and came and sat in our Manchester, New Hampshire office and was like, why are you here? Like, you should be dead. Like, you should be dried up grass. Like, I don't understand how you're, how you're doing this from here. But, you know, let's, let's go back and let's look at, you know, innovation in the internet. Well, okay, where was BB at? Right? The folks who built the imp, you yeah. know, it is, it is literally an hour away from Manchester. Yeah. Um, you know, if you look at Cabletron systems, you know, one of the big first networking players, I mean, they ultimately lost to Cisco, right? But where was Cabletron headquartered? Rochester, New Hampshire, right? If you look at, you know, Digital Equipment Corporation, um, you know, who came out with the alpha processor, which was just sunset, I think last year, right? One of the world's first 32-bit uh, CPUs, uh, Marlboro, Massachusetts. Marlboro is an hour and a half away. So I, I don't think of this so much as a access and availability problem. Uh, it was very much more a marketing and branding problem. We just didn't, mm. this, this area never sort of put that, it was never the Silicon Valley stamp of the East right. on greater New England. So, so no, I mean, yes and no, right? Like to have a successful business, you need good marketing and good branding. There's no doubt about it. Sales doesn't happen without it. I mean, you, you know, uh, what was it like to watch something that you were, uh, a part of being swallowed up by something like Oracle? I think that there's a, a natural like life cycle to companies that occur, right? Um, I had a I had a prof in graduate school that was like, you know, companies have companies have life cycles, um, and they have different approaches to things. And and a lot of times in technology, you either grow or die, right? And you know, I think we've all heard that that phrase before: grow or die. Uh, I think that you know, Oracle swallowing up dying the way it did was like the next the next step in growing or dying people would ask me questions like well you know someone is coming along and 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 taking your baby right and and maybe 20 year old tom would have like a very different emotional reaction to that i have two kids at this point um and so like that is a that just means something viscerally fundamentally very different to me of like having your baby taken from you and I know what I would, I, I know what I would do for my kids, 
Right. And, and at least in, in my worldview, a company is just a very different thing than my kids are. So, um, don't get me wrong. It's very important to me. Um, you know, when I do hear the stories from, from friends and former customers that, you know, Hey, Oracle killed off Dynact and, you know, there isn't another thing like it. I deeply sympathize and empathize with that as a former Dynect, you know, customer in my last role. Yeah. Um, it saddens me that the service that, you know, is awesome. It's an awesome DNS platform. It doesn't exist anymore. Um, but it's not my baby. And there is a certain life cycle of a company. And, you know, when you get to a certain size and scale, you do grow or die. And this both grew and died. <laughs> well, you could say it. You could say it died. I mean, that's one way to think of it. Yeah. But but being able to be behind the curtain a little bit, like I know that there in 2024, there is code running <laughs> that I wrote, a very little bit of it, but that the developers that I worked with to build Dynac platform um, in, a, in a piece of software called Tutor that is still running inside Oracle today. It's just supporting the OCI cloud business and no longer a publicly available authoritative DNS provider. So I don't know that it died. Maybe, maybe it died and reincarnated. There you go. Awesome. All right. Well, on that note, I'm going to wrap it up. Tom, thank you. Thanks, Matt. It was great chatting with you. Cheers. Cheers. This is different. Another round. So much more to talk about. Gonna aim to satisfy with help from cash fly. Get to it, do it fast. Right here on the Anycast. Make it strong, make it last. Right here on the Anycast. The Anycast Podcast. Brought to you by Cashfly.